What do we say uh, once again to appreciate that song? Amen. May the Lord truly bless you. Now, Pastor Randy Skins. God is good. And all the time. Let's say that again. God is good. And all the time. God is good. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to come to listen to the Word of God. I have every confidence that God will reach your heart with the truth through this one message, touch every single person who has made the wise and intelligent decision to be in this place at this time for this purpose, which is to be enlightened by the Word of God. Amen. For those of you with us for the very first time, we're delighted that you've come. Thank you very much. For those of you who have been coming night after night, God bless you for your faithfulness. And may he continue to bring you night after night. I want to jump right into the message. Before I do, please do three favors for me. Favor number one, please turn off all your cell phones, please. Are they off? You're not sure? Well, double check, double check. While you're doing that, favor number two, while I'm speaking, pray for me and simply say, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. Please say that. Lord, put your words in that man's mouth. And favor number three, I want you to think. I want you to think of what you're listening to. Let's bow our heads and pray. Sister, come and pray for me. Mm -hmm. Give some life to this. Ask God to use me and to bless the hearts of those who are listening, please. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to come into your house to worship. May you touch his lips that only words from you will be spoken. Mm -hmm. May our hearts be receptive to your word. And may you, Father, be glorified in everything that's going to be done now. Thank you, Father. Bless those who are still coming. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 31. Our subject is, he was tall but not long. What did I say? He was tall but not long. Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 31. Let me set up what's happening in Daniel chapter 2. King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And in this dream, when he does not, when he wakes up, he forgets the dream. So if he has forgotten the dream, you can imagine he does not know what the dream meant. And so he issues a nationwide call for all the wise men to come and tell him what he dreamt and explain the dream. They said to him, tell us what the dream was, we will explain it. And he said, the dream is gone from me. If you don't tell me the dream, I will kill you, your families, and destroy your homes. Finally, Daniel comes into his presence, brought there by Arioch, in verse 25 of Daniel 2. Now the king said to Daniel in verse 26 of uh, Daniel chapter 2, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Are you able to do this, says King Nebuchadnezzar? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded Cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the musicians, the, soothsay the magicians, the soothsayers show unto the king? But there is a God, where? In heaven. In heaven that does what? Revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Daniel said there is a king in heaven, there is a God in heaven that maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. When Joseph was taken to Pharaoh to explain Pharaoh's dream, Joseph said something similar. He said, the interpretation is not with me, but there's a God in heaven that makes things known. Do you understand that there's a God in heaven who will guide you step by step, day by day, because he knows what happens from day to day. Are you with me? Amen. The Bible doesn't say there's a witch doctor in Bulawayo. It says there's a God in heaven. Are you with me? Amen. Come on, say amen for the God in heaven. Amen. And he maketh known to Nebuchadnezzar 
and to the lowest member of the kingdom, what shall be in the latter days. Then in verse 31, Daniel proceeds to tell him what the dream was. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible, meaning very imposing and impressive. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet iron, part of iron and part of clay. So Daniel explains there was this image of gold of the head, breast and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, the legs of iron, the feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out of the mountain, or cut out without hands, which smote the image upon the feet that were of iron and clay, and brought them to pieces. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became as the shaft of the, of the threshing floors. And the, stone, and, the, and, and the stone that smote the image became a great image, a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Now, Nebuchadnezzar is listening to this. He is the head of gold, but the entire image is not gold. The breast and the arms are silver, the belly and the thighs brass, the legs iron, the feet iron and clay. Now clearly to him, even before Daniel proceeds with the explanation, he and his kingdom will not what? Last forever. And he didn't like that. There are a lot of things God says in his word we don't like. So we come up with our version. Are you with me? What's our subject? He was tall, but not long. In verse 39, uh, verse 30, let's go to verse 38. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven have given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. The 37 to 38. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, have he given into thy hands, and have made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. Just the head. And we've learned there was the head, breast and arms, belly and thighs, legs and feet. Daniel said, Here's what is coming from the God that revealed secrets. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee, which means when you pass away, after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, because silver is inferior to gold. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And verse 40, but a fourth kingdom shall be as strong as I am. So Daniel tells Nebuchadnezzar, you're one kingdom, another comes after you, another comes after that one, another comes after the third one. And in verse 45, that verse ends with, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof, what? It is sure. <laughs> no guesswork. What God is telling you through this vision, the interpretation, what it means, is sure. Amen. Well, Nebuchadnezzar is very excited. He falls down at Daniel's feet to worship him. Uh, Daniel, uh, Nebuchadnezzar gives him many great gifts, makes him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and chief of the governor of the wise men of Babylon. And then Daniel speaks to the king for his friends and the king gives them positions in the kingdom. Now the Bible says in Galatians 6 verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto those who are of the household of faith. Amen. If you know of a good position in your company, tell a member of your church first. Amen. Let me tell you what the Bible says. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto how many people? All men. But especially to those who are of the household of faith because spiritual connections are more important to God than blood connections. Amen. When Christ was on the cross, and I'm always taking these diversions or these digressions, in John 19, 26, 27, he looked down, he saw his mother Mary, there was John, one of his disciples, and he told John, that's your mother. But Jesus had four brothers. Yes. Amen. 
He didn't give his mother to one of the brothers. He gave his mother to John. Amen. A spiritual connection. Amen. When Jesus rose from the grave, many graves were open, and dead people who had died in Christ came up. When Christ ascended, they went up with him, but he left his mother. Ah, you're not listening. You and I function too much on sentiment. There is no sentimentality in the Bible. There is spirituality and principle. Are you with me? So that a church member with whom you have a spiritual bond is more important to you than a blood relative who opposes your religious choices. The Bible predicts in the time of trouble, members of the family will tell the authorities where you're hiding. Yes. Uh, let's get back to the book of so I can put you at ease. You look so troubled. <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar heard this interpretation. He did not like it. Now let's go to chapter 3 of Daniel. We read from verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold. What do you notice immediately? The entire image was what? It was gold. Now the image that he saw, what part of it was gold? The head. That head represented what? Babylon. What is he saying by making an image that's gold from head to foot? That Babylon would last for how long? Forever. It would have a long reign. And so Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. This image was tall. Amen. But according to Daniel 2, it was a long. It would come to an end. Are you with me? Huh? It was tall. Not long. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar wanted it to be tall and long. Yes. God said, uh -huh. And when God says no, no amount of human genius and wisdom can change his no yes. into a yes. yes. I don't care how much energy you expend, how much money you waste, how much time you dissipate. When God says no, you cannot turn God's no into a yes. yes. And you and I cannot turn God's yes into a no. Amen. And so Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Notice carefully, Nebuchadnezzar made this image. He set it up. Amen. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king said to gather together the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the princes, the governors, and captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together unto the dedication of the image which the Nebuchadnezzar, that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up, and they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Now we have the expression, had set up, had set up, had set up, had set up. What is the Bible trying to let us understand? Now the Bible is a book of opposites. So if Nebuchadnezzar set it up, who did not set it up? God. God. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we, we, we find this, he set up about eight times. Of course, we also find he made a couple of times. Nebuchadnezzar set up an image which was designed to rewrite history. Yes. Right. Are you following me? Yes. Amen. Verse 4. Paul did not love. Then an herald cried aloud. That's a kingly messenger. To you it is suggested, O oh people, nations and languages. What did I, where did I go wrong? To you it is commanded, O oh people, nations and languages. And every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, but psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image which the Nebuchadnezzar king has set up. And whoso, and whoso falleth not down and worship it, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Now, Nebuchadnezzar issues a command. Yes. Mm -hmm. The command was, every nation, every tongue, every people, when you hear all the instruments playing at the same time, fall down and worship this image which is gold from head to foot. Worship accept my version of history. 
I lost you on this side. You know, from time to time I say this message is so important. Yes. Each time I say it, I mean it. Amen. This message is very important. Yes. I wish heads of governments would come and listen. Amen. But they're always trying to change this. Oh, yeah. Then a herald cried aloud. Reminded of Revelation 46, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, say with a loud voice. Now you need a loud voice because the message is for whom? The whole world. Amen. Notice verse 4. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded, O people, nations, languages, meaning the whole world, because Babylon was the dominant nation on the earth at that time yes. in the world of the Bible. Yes. So the whole world. To you it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sack, psaltery, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image which Nebuchadnezzar the king hath set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship him, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music, all the peoples, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had, had, Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. This reminds me of Revelation 38. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. Amen. Because there's another image coming, there's another uh, uh, entity that's coming at the end time. And what happened in Babylon will happen again on a larger scale. Because the Bible says, what things that happen aforetime are written for our admonition. Yes. So when you say, my church does not believe in the Old Testament, you have robbed yourself. Yes. Because the only way to learn the wisdom is to study what happened. Are you with me? Amen. The Bible says what things were written before time were written for our admonition that we, through patience and hope, may have uh, hope and confidence in God's scriptures. Yes. When you disregard the Old Testament, you disregard the Bible Jesus had. Yes. Amen. When Jesus said, and he searched the scriptures, for if then you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. What he's saying is, the whole Old Testament talks about me. Yes. Amen. Are you following me? Amen. That's what he's saying. So it's very dangerous to say, I'm a New Testament Christian. You have to be a Bible Christian. Amen. Because the gospel goes from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. Yes. And the superstar of the Bible is Jesus Christ from the one who said let there be light until Revelation 22, 14. Yes. Or 22, the last verse. All right. This command is given. Now, in Exodus 20, verse 4, the Bible says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, yes. or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Yes. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, Amen. nor serve them. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar said, disregard that. Forget that. You know what I say. I have made the image, now you bow, and if you don't, you're dead. God says, if you bow to an image, you're dead. Because the wages of sin. Amen. Ah. For those of you here for the first time, we fight every night. You know what he listens to me. God says the wages of sin is death. If you make an image and bow to it and you don't repent, the penalty is death. Then you can also say, if you don't bow, the penalty of death. Now we've got to choose. Whose version of history and truth will we follow and live by? Yes. Yes. Listen to me carefully in the presence of the Holy God. Ask yourself this question. Am I worshipping God based on what he says or what a modern Nebuchadnezzar says? Yes. When God came into the garden to investigate that crisis caused by disobedience. Yes. Hmm? He said, As, you know, he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard thy voice in the garden, Genesis 3.10, and I was afraid 
because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, verse 11, who told thee that I was naked? What is God implying? Ah, I like that person. Who is that? Ah, God bless you. He is implying, I didn't tell you. And if I didn't tell you, and you did it, who told you? Listen to me carefully. Who told you to do what you're doing? Who told you to get involved with that man? And I'm always hitting relationships. Yeah, that's where all the elsewhere's come from. Who told thee? Who told you to get involved with that man? Of that woman? Who? Did you pray? Did you fast? Did you seek God in counsel? Amen. Or did you get your advice from television? And magazines? Or whatever you download and upload. <laughs> My friends of Mount Pleasant and surrounding areas, answer this question carefully. Are you following God's version or Nebuchadnezzar's version? Verse 8. Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. The word Chaldean means Babylonian. They spake and said to the king of Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree. Now the word decree in verse 10 is identical to command in yes. verse 4. Are yes. you with me? Amen. Thou, O king, not your system, you. Hmm? You've made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, and psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And who shall fall him down and worship him, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews. Amen. I hope you and I are among them. Are you with me? Amen. Because he's not a Jew who is one outwardly, but who's one inwardly, Romans chapter 2, 28 and 29. There are certain Jews. There are certain people in my presence. Whom thou hast set over the affairs of the kingdom of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. What they're saying is they think very little of you. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who might prefer to call Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Mm -hmm. Those are the Bible names. Yes. They did not disrespect Nebuchadnezzar. They respected God. Amen. Are you with me? And sometimes respect for God comes across as disrespect for somebody else. Yes. But if God says don't eat something and you cook it and I will eat it and not disrespecting you, I'm respecting God. Can you say amen? Understand me clearly, very often obedience to God will come across as disrespect for somebody else. But that's a risk you must take. Yes. Amen. And so if a wife decides to keep the Sabbath, the husband decides against it. Then he accuses her of disrespect. Mm -hmm. That is the highest form of respect. Amen. Respect for God. God. Yes. And so these men said, These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They disrespect. They have no regard for you. They're down on you. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image, which thou hast. Then he recognized in his fury, Commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, then they brought these men before the king. Then Benazah spake and said unto them, Is it true? Is it, remember that? Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do we not serve my gods? Verse 15. That at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, he fall down and worship the image which I have made well. Let's go. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Yes. Now that's intimidation and that's threat. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar wants to know, is there an authority, anyone else in heaven on earth, more powerful than I? Yes. So who is that God? which shall deliver you out of my hands. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
answered and said to the, speak to the king and said, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Amen. If it be so, if that's the way you want it, our God is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, Amen. and he will deliver us out of thy hands, O king. Yes. And I love verse 18. But if not, yes. even if God doesn't do something for me, I will not worship your God. Amen. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image, finish it for me, which thou hast said of it. Let me go back to verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, we want you to know, without question, we want you to know and not guess. We are not serving your gods, we are not worshiping your image, we are worshiping the God of heaven and earth. Now I'm asking you a question now, do you tell your friends, do you tell your family members, do you tell your colleagues, be it known unto you that I worship the God of heaven and earth. Be it known unto you, I follow God's version of history, not man's. Be it known unto you, I observe the commandments as written in the Bible. Amen. Not as reinterpreted by some religious authority. Yes. Be it known, those, what those men said. We want you to understand without question. While we are part of your kingdom, and we have a certain respect for you. We place God above you, Amen. even at the risk of our lives. Yes. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, there's coming a day when this situation will replay on a global level. Yes. Revelation tells us, and I will deal with that before this series ends, that there will be a religious power on this, on this earth that will enforce the worship of an image yes. Amen. and the penalty for not worshiping that image will be death yes. and you can go ahead and read it in Revelation chapter 13 14 15 and to 18 in preparation for whenever I deliver that message maybe this week or next week but tonight I want you to understand that while Nebuchadnezzar decided my image will be gold from head to foot it was a tall image Yes. But it didn't last very long. Amen. I don't know what plans you have for yourself. I don't know what your view is of God and his word and his claims on your life. But whatever image you are erecting in your own life, it may be tall. You finish it. It will not be long. Because God has said whatever he has said and what God says stands Amen. and comes to pass. Yes. Let me ask you a question, and I'm always hitting this subject because it is the one area where most Christians have a problem. Who set up the seven-day Sabbath? You tell me. Nebuchadnezzar or God? God. God. Who set up Sunday? Nebuchadnezzar or God? Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. Yes. Preach. I have to give you time to think. Yes. So you can think and say, well, let me not get angry with that man. He's just asking a wrong question. Let me ask it again. Who said the seven days of Sabbath are below thy God? God? That's his word. Who said Sunday? Nebuchadnezzar. And I'll show you that Sunday is a worship is a man-made institution which Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Amen! I've told you before, worship, the highest form of worship is what? Obedience. Obedience. God said in Gen uh, Daniel 2, your kingdom will end. That, uh, Nebuchadnezzar didn't like it. Nebuchadnezzar said in chapter 3, my kingdom will not end, and God didn't like it. Yes. Uh, you missed what I said. Amen. Amen. No. The Bible is the book of? Let me repeat that. God said in Daniel 2, Babylon will end. Nebuchadnezzar didn't like it. Yes. He tried to do something about it. In chapter 3, 7 of the of all gold. God didn't like his version. Yes. Amen. And so a few years later, God sent the Persians and destroyed the Babylonians. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar didn't see it. He was dead. But you and I know. It is not what you say, it is what God says. Amen. Amen. And so I ask you tonight, as you think, 
whose system are you following? Who set it up? God or Nebuchadnezzar? And that's a question you and I must answer with painful honesty. Because it will determine our outcome. Amen. Whether we go this way or that way. In Psalm 111, verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, The works of his hands are verity and judgment. Verity means truth. All his commandments are sure. Yes. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Now let me preach another sermon. Amen. To back up this one. Listen to the Bible again. The works of his hand, whatever God does, are verity, which truth, and judgment, they are right. All his commandments are sure. The verse doesn't say nine of them are sure. Amen. How many of them are sure? All ten. So if God made them sure, steadfast, established, you can't tinker with one. Amen. Because when you tinker with one, you're tinkering with God. Yes. Are you with me? That's why Jesus says, Inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, finish it for me. You've done it to me. When you tinker with a child of God, you're tinkering with God. Yes. And when you tinker with God, you're tinkering with oblivion, Amen. destruction, yes. and death. Yes. Never play with God, nor the devil. Amen. So the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. Now let's look at the works of his hands. They are done in truth and uprightness. What are the works of God's hands? Psalm 8 from verse 3. When I consider thy heavens, the works of thy fingers, meaning all of creation. Hebrews chapter 1 from 10, God the Father says to the Son, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of my hands. Amen. Creation is a result of the work of God's hands. Amen. Now, the Bible says the works of his hands are done in verity and judgment or truth and uprightness. Now, which means, follow me closely, when God said, and who was this God in particular? Christ. Christ. When he said, let us be light, remember his works are done in truth. Yes. Psalm 111 verse 8. When he said, let there be light, and there was light, we know that was a command. The Bible says that, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. But a command is also something else. Are you with me? Yes. When Christ said, let there be light, that's what he said, then the light came. So what the outcome and the intent, they matched. What was that statement, let there be light? A statement of? Ah, who said that? Ah, I like you. A statement of truth. Yes. Amen. All his works are done in truth. Now let me, let me flesh that out. This is very serious. Amen. Everything is serious, I keep saying that. In Numbers 23 verse 19, the Bible says, God is not a man that he should lie. Yes. Not, what, what does that mean immediately? He cannot lie. Yeah, he, he's, a, he's not a man that he lies. What does that say about us? We lie. All right. God, when you read the Bible, look for what not is said in plain words. But there are messages not put in words. You have to work them out. That's why God gave you and me what? A mind. That's why I ask you every night to? God is not a man or a woman that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Now notice how the verse ends. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Now, this expression, make it good. I want to explain why creation is, uh, was done in truth. Every time God said, let it be, when the thing happened, that was true. There are two ways to lie. Way number one, to deliberately falsify the truth. So someone comes to one of my sisters, how old are you? 16. But oh, you're 46, are you with me? And you've been 16 for 10 years, so you're really 56. All right, so that's a lie. Yeah. Huh? Deliberate twisting of the truth. 
there is another way to lie which is non-deliberate or which is uh, not immoral. It has to do with circumstances making it impossible to do what you said. Let me explain what I mean. This is the way I always explain it. You have children, Christmas is coming next month, I think. You promise your son, your daughter, your son a bicycle. Actually, you promised him since July. But you lost your job in August. I remember. Yeah. Then your wife got sick in September. And you needed all your savings to keep the family running and for her illness. Sickness is very expensive, so you need to follow the health laws of the Bible. Christmas cars. Your little boy doesn't care that you lost your job. That's not his business. Are you with me? That's the way we should be with God. Are you following me? God says, I'll do something. We must expect it from God. Christmas Day, he stays up all night, uh, Christmas Eve. Christmas morning, he wants to ride his bicycle from his bedroom to the living room. So he says, Daddy, where's my life? And you come to him with your head down. He's your good father. And you say, son, I did buy one. Why? I ran out of money. But you promised. Huh? Yes. You promised. Now, did the father deliberately and dishonestly withhold the bicycle? No. Did circumstances make it impossible for him to provide one? Yes. yes. That was a lie. <laughs> but not a moral lie. Are you with me? When you make a statement, I will come to the meeting at 7.30 on the dock. And you're driving, your car runs into a ditch. And the other car comes and falls on top. <laughs> you can't come! And so you show up at 8.30 while we're going home. And the students are running to the bus. And that's when you arrive. Now, you intended to come. But circumstances happen. Are you with me? Yes. Now, with God, there is no circumstance, come on, huh? That can keep God from getting your bicycle for you. Because when God says something, He does it because He cannot lie. Whether by twisting the truth or by being hampered by circumstances, He cannot lie. Now, when He said, let there be light, if no light had come, what would let there be light have been? Why? Yes. So creation was done in truth. Because he said, let there be light, and there was the light. Let there be a bicycle, there was a bicycle. Amen. 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 Yes, it was a command. Yes. Well, that tells us now that every command is a statement of truth. Amen. Amen. Come on, give me some more amen. Amen. Well, give God more me, I didn't write the one. Yes. So I repent of that. Don't get with me. Give him. I'm about to strike you with leprosy in this book that you give him. <laughs> not me. Please, not me. Yes. No. We say, since the world was made by command, yes. and it is sustained by command, but we just learned every command is a statement of truth. Yes. The universe was made in truth. It is sustained by truth. Yes. Amen. Now, to fit in. I remember fit on this one? Yes. We talk about commandments. Yes. Now we see commandments of truth. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that Psalm 119, verse 172, all thy commandments are truth. Yes. To fit into a system of truth, you must live your life based on truth. Amen. Okay. Yes. When you live your life based on error, you are out of whack, as we say over there. Out of sync with the system God set up. Yes. So when the sun rises every morning, that is his response to a statement of truth. Yes. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. When the grain said to the waves, thus far and no further, that's the way of responding to a command of truth. Amen. When God said, let there be light, and there was light, that was a statement of truth. Because what happened is what God said. Yes. Now God said, remember the seventh day to keep the Sabbath day, keep it holy, six days shall not labor. The seventh day is a Sabbath. That's a statement of truth. Yes. Amen. Now don't hurt me. Listen to me now. Don't hate me. Don't hurt me. Don't poison me. <laughs> when you say, remember Sunday, if remember the seventh day is a statement of truth, 
Ah, you see where I'm going? Yes, sir. Finish it for me, huh? What is Remember Sunday? It's a lie. Am I speaking with respect? Amen. Amen. True. Because you cannot show. In the Bible. In the Bible. Yes. Let me tell you something. If you say Sunday to Sabbath, you know I hate this Sabbath question all the time, as I said. You know Jesus told the rich young ruler, yet lacketh thou how many things? You know how many millions of Christians, they only lack the right thing to be fully right with God? One. That's changed the day. One. On another occasion, God, Christ told a, a scribe in uh, Mark 12, verse uh, 34, thou art not far from the kingdom of God. Yes. You're close, but you're not there. Are you with me? Yes. How many of us are close, God, preacher? <laughs> in other words, one more step. And you're there. When you say Sunday is a Sabbath, it's a day of rest. When you have God resting on the first day, you know what you have discanceled? What did you make on the first day? Ah, you don't follow. You've cancelled the light? No one than most people walk in darkness. Amen. Yes. You know, let me tell you a little secret. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm getting ready to preach, I literally say, Father, if you can send someone else to take my place, that'd be fine with me. No, I literally pray. Because the things I have to say are so tough. And I know it does not sit well with people, or they don't sit well with people, but you have to say. And sometimes I wrestle with God, Father, uh, if you send me a message now and says, I've got someone else to preach, I will just do that. <laughs> Let someone else do that rough task. You think it's easy for me to tell you what I tell you from night to night? But you know what? As hard as it is for me, when I leave this pulpit at night and I go to my room, I have to kneel down and say to God, I have not shunned to declare to them all the counsel of God. And so Paul says in Acts chapter 20, verse, verse 26, Wherefore I take you to, 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 to declare this day, to witness this day, that I am pure from the blood of all men. Yes. Then he explains why. For I have not shunned to declare unto you, verse 27, all the counsel of God. Amen. A preacher who does not tell you as it is has blood on his hands. Yes. Yes. Paul said, I have no blood on my hands because I have told you. Now you may not have liked it. Amen. I don't want blood on my hands. Yes. And the only way to have clean hands when I leave uh, Zimbabwe to my sorrow in December, whatever, is to make sure I can say to God, in the time I had, I told them everything I thought they could take. Yes. If any one of them is lost, Father, it is not my fault. Amen. The image, the message represented by the image in Daniel 2, that message was truth. Your kingdom is coming to an end. Yes. And it did. The message of Daniel 3, that the battle will last forever, was not truth. Yes. But Nebuchadnezzar called the entire world to accept his version. And I will show you how Sunday worship was begun by a church, not God. And this church was in existence before the Baptists, the Pentecostals, the Lutheran, the Presbyterians, the, 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 the whatever. Which means that every time a Baptist keeps Sunday, the Baptist is accepting the authority of that church. Because when that church said Sunday is the day, there were no Baptists. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm preaching nine sermons in one. When a Pentecostal observes Sunday, that Pentecostal is accepting the authority of the organization that tried to change God's word. Yes, yes. And you have to understand that. Because worship is obedience. Amen. And when you obey error, you worship error. Now you may not do it deliberately. 
Is God merciful? Yes. And God says, let me arrange this meeting in my pleasure. Amen. To tell you things you would never ever hear. Yes. Amen. Never. Anywhere else. Amen. Nebuchadnezzar set up, 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 eight times, set up, set up, set up, a few other times, which I have made, I have made. About 13 or 14 times there are suggestions that this thing he wanted people to worship, he set up. Three boys said no, we're not bound. Because the Bible says thou shalt not make unto thee any grave in and that image of all gold, that was a lie. Yes. The first that history tried to teach was a lie. Yes. The history taught by the image of two, which was God's version, that was true. Yes. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar should have accepted God's version, surrendered to it, changed his life by the power of God's spirit, and lived a life for God to Amen. be a blessing to his nation. Yes. But he tried to take the entire world, not just the entire world remember Daniel chapter 3 verse 4. Do you just command it, O people, nations, languages? Into false doctrine, into idolatry. An idol does not have to be made of wood or of stone. Your idol can be a false teaching. Yes. Amen. You know, there's a book, there's a lady whose books I love to read. She makes a statement in one of her books called Great Controversy. Page uh, 583, paragraph 1. It is as easy to make an image of false doctrines and theories as the fashion an image of women's stone. Yes. When you receive Bible evidence that the survey is the south, and you persist in following a false doctrine, that is your image. You see, when you disregard truth, you disregard God. Yes. Jesus says, I am the way, truth. the truth. First John 5, 6 says, it is the spirit that bears witness because the spirit is truth. Yes. Deuteronomy 32, verse 4, he is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity, he is a God of truth. So God the Father is truth. God the Son is truth. God the Holy Ghost is truth. When you reject truth, you reject the heavenly family. When you reject God, based on the law of opposites, he you. when He rejects you, but when you reject God, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. When you reject God in that rejection, you've accepted whom? I'm glad you said it wrong. That's why Jesus says, He that is not for me. Which means there is no one. Middle ground. God bless you for saying it. There is no, listen to me. There is no middle ground. Yes. You can't occupy a, a central position between God and Satan while you decide. Right. You decide on one side or the other. Right. And so Jesus says in Matthew 12, Satan has a kingdom and God has a kingdom. If Satan cast out Satan, he's divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Matthew 12, 26, I believe. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God, two kingdoms. Which means different groups of citizens. Which means two rulers. Which means two outcomes. Yes. Question four, you don't answer me. To which kingdom do you belong? If you suspect that you belong to the wrong kingdom, you can switch to night. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, you can only switch by God's help. Because the devil does not let people go. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 14, verse 17, who openeth not the house of his prisoners. The Bible says, when the devil has you, he doesn't let you go. Yes. That's why Matthew 12, 29 says, or else, how can one enter into a strong man's house, the strong man is Satan, 
and spoil his goods, take away what he has, except he first bind the strong man, ties him in the knot, and then he will spoil his goods. What Christ is saying, because Christ had just delivered a demon possessed man from Satan's kingdom. Yes. Are you with me? In verse 22, where it says, Of Matthew 12, then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him yes. in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. So Christ had delivered a captive from Satan's kingdom. And Christ is saying, in order for me to do that, I must have a power greater than Satan. Amen. So Satan is a strong man, but I'm a stronger man. I really Amen. Mean. And so I delivered one of Satan's captives. When Satan has you, the only way you get away is if Jesus releases you. Ah, but it has to be at your invitation. Yes. That's why there's freedom in God, you see. When you serve God, you can leave God anytime you like. Amen. You can just say, God, I'm sick of you, and you're yes. and you're gone. Yes. You can't do that to Satan. Yes. Now, you can desire to leave. You can't leave. Yes. You've got to call for the, for the Marines. <laughs> or what do you have in Zimbabwe, whatever you have. You've got to call for the school. You've got to call for help from outside. Jesus, come get me. All right, I preach about five sermons tonight. Let me ask you a question. Don't answer me. Just think. Which version of history do you live by? What God said in chapter 2? Or what Nebuchadnezzar said in chapter 3? What God said in chapter 2 came to pass. Because God cannot yes. lie. What Nebuchadnezzar said, tall but it was very short, his kingdom fell. And it fell almost without a sword being raised. Because while Belshazzar was having a drunken feast with all his wives, all his wives, he should have had one, but all his wives, <laughs> the Middle Persians, they diverted the Euphrates River. Are you with me? Yes. It used to flow under a gate right through the middle of the city. So if the city was besieged, the people always had water to drink. They diverted the river, and the soldiers came under those iron gates, came in, took the city almost without lifting a sword, because those who should be guarding it were drunk. <laughs> By the way, if you drink, stop. God showed how easily he can change mankind's version of history. Are you with me? Amen. Not a lot of fighting. Just God just easily yes. overthrew Nebuchadnezzar's person. Now, says God, although he was dead, your kingdom has come to an end. Its run has been short. Yes. My brothers and sisters, there's a, there's a text, uh, Isaiah 66. It says, from one Sabbath to another, meaning the new world, shall all flesh come and worship before Amen. Amen. Sabbath observance will have a long history. Amen. It continues into the new world. And how long will we live in the new world? Forever. Sunday worship will come to an end. Amen. Just like Daniel 3 and his image, uh, the Bible has his image. Let me say it again. Sunday worship is coming to an end. Yes. Because God tolerates defiance only so long. Mm. Sabbath observance will continue right into the new world. Yes. Amen. You see, I'll tell you some other time. Tonight, tonight, no, the students have to get back to study history and something else. Tonight, make a choice. God or the beginner. God will not make the choice for you, but he advises you. Remember Deuteronomy 30, verse 19? I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. You see, God wants to make sure that you can never say, you didn't tell me. He gets witnesses. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Then he says, therefore, choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. And tonight God is saying, here's my version of history, here's Nebuchadnezzar, choose mine. Amen. Here's my day of worship. Here's Nebuchadnezzar's. Choose mine. Here's my version of marriage, one man, one woman. Here's your tribe's version. Choose mine. Here's my version of healthful living, no alcohol, no cigarettes. Here's the world's version, wine and cigarettes and whatever else I'm proud of. Choose mine. Amen. Because God's way is always 
the best way. It is the blessed way. How many of you will say tonight, Father, I choose your way, not Nebuchadnezzar's way. Can I see your right hand? I mean, if you mean it. Can I see your right hand? Stand up with me. I choose your way, not Nebuchadnezzar's way. of you. God wants us to make one step at a time. Not two steps at a time. One. For those of you, your tradition is not Sabbath keeping. It's Sunday observance. <clears throat> You've been doing it with a lot of start. What did I say? You've been doing it with a lot of start. You've been coming, you've been hearing God's word. I won't speak to those who observe Sunday. Those of you who will say, Father, I've been hearing things I haven't heard before, and I love you. I want to take an honest look at this issue of Sabbath versus Sunday, your way versus the Bukhanasa's way. I want to take an honest look because I truly love you. And if I see that your Sabbath is really the seventh day, that's what I want to do. I am willing to do things your way. Let me repeat, you're not a Sabbath keeper, you're an honest Sunday keeper. But God says we must worship Him not only in sincerity, but in truth. It could be the truth has been missing for your experience, now you want to act true. I'm asking you, if you're a Sunday keeper and you want to say, Father, I have a heart to obey you, I am willing to obey you, Convict my heart, teach me, guide me, and lead me to truth. If you'll make that decision in God's presence tonight, let me see your right hand. I love you. God bless you. I need that from God. God bless you. I want to do what's right and obey you, not the ask. Raise your right hand and don't take it down. I want to obey you, not the you can ask. Let me trouble you again. Come. Amen. Let me trouble you. Come. Amen. Come. Come. Amen. I want to obey God, not the Bukhanasa. I want to obey God, not the Pope. You come. Amen. Don't hesitate. Come. Please come. And bring someone with you by the hand who may be hesitating. Because I believe you love God. I know you do. I know you love God. And it is out of love that God has brought this life to you. And love obeys. That's the only way love proves its genuineness in obeys. Someone has come. I am willing to obey God because I love Him. But there are many things I never knew. I just didn't know. As was the case with my family. But as I learn, every time I learn, I need to take one step to show God I really love Him. Don't wait until you know everything. You know what they told Christ on the cross? Come down, we'll believe you. But if he had come down, he would have said, jump over that string. That's the way people are. You don't have to know everything. All you have to know is what I know is true. Yes. Act on that, uh -huh. then God shows you more. Act on that, then God shows you more. I love God. I want to obey God, not Nebuchadnezzar. I want to worship what God has set up, not Nebuchadnezzar. Amen. Come. Let me pray. Send you home. Come back tomorrow. If you know anyone studying statistics, bring the person tomorrow. What did I say? If you know anyone studying statistics, you include your professor, bring them tomorrow. Tomorrow night we're studying statistics 101. <laughs> Anyone else? I love God, I want to obey God. I'm learning, and as I learn, I want to step out. Because Jesus said to some people, you are not far from the kingdom of God. That's what he said. You are close. Well, take that final step. One thing lack is thou. If you lack one thing, get it. Amen. And come on board completely. I'll just give you 60 seconds. I need it tonight. But my friends have to go. 60 seconds come. I love God. I want to obey God. Not let you can ask it. That's the only two choices you have. Just come, please. 45 seconds. It is not
not by accident this meeting has been arranged. It is not. Yes. 30 seconds. When I was in the United States, or which is where I live, I've always heard that Babylonians are religiously serious people. I've always heard that. And that's the truth. That's the Babylonians take religion seriously. So I always wanted to come and preach to people who are serious about God. Amen. Amen. 15 seconds. Any other serious in Babylonians? Lord, I didn't know, now I know, I have to act. If you, can, if you have been saying two and two makes five, then your teacher shows you it's four, you don't keep saying five. Are you with me? Yes. You say four and you find your teacher. You don't have to find me, thank God. Yes. 60 seconds are up, I have to pray, I want to keep my word, heads bowed, eyes closed. Loving Father in heaven, following the truth is not a natural act. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, yes. for it is not subject to the law, and the law is truth. So we are naturally opposed to truth, Father. That's why we need conversion, not improvement. Conversion to go from the flesh to the spirit. Yes. Gathered before you, Father, are those whom you love and who love you. Amen. They are learning things they never knew. Yes. And they want to show you that their love for you is genuine and they're taking steps as their knowledge grows. Amen. And that's all you ask for because you said in Luke 16, 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. Yes. And so as they show faithfulness in the little they have learned, you bless them, God. Amen. Give them a mind and a heart that's determined to walk in the light of truth. Amen. Because the very world in which they live was made in truth. Yes. Let their delight, it was like they called that was a statement of truth. And so I'm asking you, their Father, give them strength. Yes. Give them the determination exceeding that of the three Hebrew boys who stood up for truth at the risk of their lives. Yeah. Give them a strength exceeding Daniel's who faced lions in order that he might not pray to a man. Amen. Give them that heart, I pray. The heart of Christ, who died to save. Father, for those who are still struggling, and that's always the case, and the struggle is not a sin, they go, we know that. But let them understand, if they struggle too long, they may cease to struggle. Father, work feverishly in their lives to bring them to the point of surrender. Amen. To decide, I want to follow God, not Nebuchadnezzar. Yes. Father, we thank you for truth and the cleansing effect it has on the mind yes. and on the heart. Use those who have come, even in the infancy of their decision, use them to inspire others. Amen. Bring us back tomorrow night, I pray. In Jesus' name and for his sake, that all God's people say, Amen, amen. and Amen. Last stanza of our first stanza of our hymn, sing them over again to me. <coughs> sing them over again. Is that too high? Give us a pitch that's not too destructive to the world of God. Come, my hands are done. Over again to me. Wonderful words of love. Make sure we've got the cards. Let me more of your beauty see. Wonderful words of love. Words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and duty. Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore that all God's truth loving people say Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Remember I love you. Come back tomorrow. Bring someone with you. What are we studying tomorrow night? Statistics 101. That's not the title but that's what we're studying. God bless you. Amen. We want to thank the Lord so much. Probably, I'm going to request, please, before we find out, I know there's a stream of Africa that takes place outside. Uh, we want to welcome and recognize the presence of one of our government ministers, uh, Minister Gordon Moyo, who is among us, Minister of State Enterprises. Uh, we just ask you, say, if we could bother you, Honorable, to just stand so that we...
appreciate your presence. What a blessing today. Amen. May the Lord truly bless you uh, and your households. We also want to recognize the fact that Minister S.S. Nkomo was with us last night. Please, if you see other ministers, bring them along with you. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Minister, Honorable Minister, may I say a prayer for you? Let's bow our heads. Quiet. Father in heaven, the Bible says in Titus chapter 3, verse 1, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers to obey magistrates, Amen. to obey rulers of the land. We thank you for the presence of a ruler whom you have put in position. We ask you to bless him, give him wisdom from on high day God. That is especially a blessing to this country. Bless not only him, but all of the rulers whom you have allowed to occupy positions. Bless them professionally and personally, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Amen.